calling out Gorilla Hebrew for what? How long now, guys? How long have I been calling out um, uh, uh, Sakari? I've been calling those guys out for about a year and some change. So I will shave for this interview. I will get all of this stuff off my face. <laughs> and I will handle my business against um, uh, Sakari like I did the last time. My number? All right. I'm not scared of Sakari when I order. Gorilla Hebrew told me, or I don't know if that was Deacon Haka or uh, Gorilla Hebrew, they told me I'm not ready. Oh, I'm ready. I'll take you on right now if you want. I'll take on all, I'll take on your whole camp by myself. I have no problem with that. I do want to say this, and I want to say this now so that everybody can hear me say this. Anybody who chooses to go on Inside the Nation, do not go to the hot seat. 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 The hot seat. This hot seat is only designed to have you come on the channel so that they can laugh at you. You're not going to have a back and forth with them. It's a Hebrew original like YouTube channel, and they claim that they're destroying Christian doctrine on that channel. They're not destroying Christian doctrine, but they're really good at asking questions of them. This wasn't a debate. What it was, was they wanted me to sit there and, and uh, answer a bunch of questions for them. Meaningless, pointless questions. Christian doctrine, but they're really good at asking questions of I guess so. What's up, what's up, Jim, man? You ready to do it? Yeah. Did you guys catch that? I'm just supposed to sit there and just answer all of their questions. That's all I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to just sit there and answer their questions. He asked me, uh, did I love Jesus? What does the word Jesus mean? What does Jesus mean? Right. That's a good question. Uh, top of my head, I don't know. Okay. Now, did you guys hear what I said? He asked me, what did Jesus mean? And I said, I didn't know. He asked me, what did Jesus mean? And I said, I didn't know. He asked me, what did Jesus mean? And I said, I didn't know. Later on, he's going to sit there and try to tease me because I told him I didn't know what the name Jesus meant. But they're really good at asking questions, though. Uh, Jimmy, do we have free will? Yeah, I definitely believe we have free will, yes. Did the slaves that were brought to America have free will? No. Uh, when the slaves were brought over here during the transatlantic slave trade, uh, some of them were stolen, some of them were sold, okay? Uh, some of them were traded for sugar and spice and everything. So uh, when, when they came over here, they were brought over here by force. They still had free will to make their own decisions. Some of them didn't have to be slaves anymore. They could have ran away, and some of them did. And some of them chose to, to be slaves. They still had free will to make their own decisions. Some of them didn't have to be slaves anymore. They could have ran away, and some of them did. And some of them chose to, to be slaves. Okay, G man, you have do you have free choice to come to God or not? Yes, I do. I'm not a Calvinist. Okay, so can you choose to resist God's calling on your life? Can you choose can you choose to resist his will? Yes, I believe that people can choose to, to resist his will. I am not a okay. Calvinist. Okay, okay. Now I want you to exegete this passage for me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 9. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 9. Let's go there real quick. Romans chapter 9. Mm -hmm. Romans 9 and 10, right? Nope, 9 and 19. Okay, all right. Remember, you just told everybody you can resist the will of God. So go ahead. Okay, I'll read it. Uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 19. All right. So, okay, so we're not going to read this in context. We're just going to read it. Okay, cool. No problem. Uh, verse 19, and it says, uh, Thou will say then unto me, Why doeth he find it find fault, or who have resisted his will? So Paul is saying, Who has resisted? And then the next verse he says, Nay, meaning nobody. So you're saying that you're stronger than the God of the universe, and you can, re you can res resist his will, all right? But Paul, the apostle, is saying nobody can resist his will. So who's right here, G-Man or the apostle Paul? i like a one minute to answer that. Go ahead. Let's actually read this in context and read it from 19 to verse 20. You guys see what I mean? I'm going to read real okay. fast. Okay. But oh, it says, uh, thou wilt say then unto me, why doth uh, uh, he yet find fault? For who have resisted uh, his will? Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that repliest against God? So, so the thing formed say to the thing that is formed, why hast thou made, made me thus? I don't see where you're saying that that, that it can't be done when um, uh, I read the verses and they'll say that in my KJV. I don't know what translation you're reading. But they're really good at asking questions, though. So I got no problem. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on here and I'm going to go inside the nation. I'm going to do my thing. 
And like I said, I predict a lot of frustration from them and not from me. Why do I need to execute scriptures that you're picking? This nigga's an idiot. Oh, 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 no, I want to use scripture that I want to use. I'm tired of reading your scripture. I want to read mine. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to read my passages of scripture. Not yours no more. Here's what you said. Here's what you said. You muted. Here's what you said. You just said you wanted to read your scriptures. You're tired of reading their scriptures. But they don't have no scriptures. It's the Bible. It's supposed to be all the, reason, the scriptures. The reason why I said that. The reason why I said that. And by the way, uh, it's not the nation. Because I oh, I'm sorry, Abaya and Anaya, right? Abaya. The reason why I said that, Abaya, is because ever since I came in this room, You've been asking me to read scriptures for you. Then you want me to break them down. I never once said, I believe this, I believe that. You guys started bringing up free will and all this other stuff. I never said, I believe any of that. Listen to me. You guys are bringing up this no, argument that you me, but I believe as a Christian. You're the ones making it up as you go along, and I'm finding this very entertaining. And I'm going to deny all of this garbage when I go to my channel. You no guys want to No one asked you, no one is trying to put their belief or anything on you. You will make a statement, and after you make the statement, they ask you to read a verse that clearly contradicts your statement. That's it. Nothing more. I was about to say a lot of other stuff too, but you just you just cut me off. So what was I gonna say? I'm trying to, but you keep interrupting me. I can't answer a question if you won't shut up long enough to let me answer it. You have to shut up for me to do it. They believe that they can tell me that, that they can ask me to read a verse and they explain what it means. Just out of nowhere. Then go to another verse and say, see, you don't understand the Bible. What you're asking me don't have anything to do with anything. You understand, when I'm talking to an atheist, for example, when an atheist says, gee, man, do you believe that God can do slavery? And I say, no. The atheist will go into the Bible and show me in the Bible where this instance happened and this instance happened, and then they'll ask me, uh, well, how does your God not condone slavery when we have all these different verses? They didn't do that. You will make a statement, and after you make the statement, they ask you to read a verse that clearly contradicts your statement. That's it. Nothing more. They call me a 40-year-old virgin. I told them I'm not a virgin. Now, if they're going to tell me that I'm a virgin, they should be able to tell me why I'm a virgin. They also tried to talk to me like I was a feminist and like I was gay. Where's your proof that I'm gay? I speak against that stuff all the time on YouTube. Like, where's your proof for that? Anything. Anything. And look a little fruity. They won't shut up about wanting my booty. Um, they won't shut up about wanting my booty. Um, they won't shut up about wanting my booty. Um, See, man, you, you gotta put this weird stuff aside, brother. Can somebody please tell me what, which Christian doctrine was destroyed on that show? Anybody. Can somebody give me one Christian doctrine that was watching that believes that, that... I'm sorry, can somebody give me one Christian doctrine that was destroyed on that show? Just one. Uh, what's the age of accountability for uh, kids, uh, Jimmy? For kids? Yeah. I believe it's eight, seven. I don't have a scripture to give you right now for it. I have to look for it. Please. Why, why do you believe it's eight or seven? I, say, I believe it's seven. I never said eight. It's seven. Okay, well, why do you believe it's seven if you don't have a scripture for it? Where did you get it? Where did you get that? Well, I've been the Old Testament. If you give me a little time, I can find it. I don't have the whole Bible memorized. Perfect. If you can find it, we'd definitely love to hear it. All right. At some point during this presentation. Doesn't right, matter. Just give me a minute. I'll find it. Yeah, what does it have to do with the gospel? I, I'm wondering why you would ask me those questions about the gospel. This is, this, this is the hot seat. I'm asking you questions based off of things I've heard you say. So I've heard you say to somebody before, an atheist, when you're debating him, that the age of accountability is seven and it's in the Old Testament. Now, if you can't find that there, that means you sat there and lied to that boy in that debate. You owe him an apology if you can't really? find it. Really? If you can't find it. Yeah, you lied to him. Is that okay with you? If you say so. If you say is so. Is it okay to lie to people about the Bible? What do you think? Well, as soon as I find the passage, right now I'm in the middle of a discussion, so. Okay. Yeah, you're in a discussion with me. Let's, let's okay. find the passage, brother. I will. So anyway, uh, what's the next question? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, okay. So just, just to be clear, you said the age of accountability in the Bible is seven years old, but yeah. you can't find the scripture for it right now. Yeah, when I find the scripture, I'll give it to you. Okay, perfect. Now, I don't want anybody to forget that we've been waiting for G-Man to get that age of accountability scripture this whole time. So just make sure you guys remember that. Go ahead, carry on. Hey, Sarge, you know, I got it right here. It's in Isaiah. You know, I got it right here. It's in Isaiah. You know, I got it right here. It's in Isaiah. You know, I got it right here. It's in Isaiah. But I need to read this through. But I can't do that and talk to you at the same time. But you wanted me to find that passage uh, regarding the age of accountability. 
Well, you're not. We, we know you're not going to find it, and we don't have all. Well, actually, I did kind of find it already. I was just reading this thingy to make sure that I had it. So I know I'm going to find it. So. And the truth of the matter is, there are times when people ask me questions about the scripture I don't know the answer to. But guess what? Uh, I did Google it when I was on the show, and I was trying to read through it. But I'm on a hot seat, so they don't give you any adequate time to try to read something and to give them an answer. Because I don't think they were they were ever really interested in the answer. So what I want to do is I want to show you this here. You can Google it, the age of accountability, and you're going to get various different answers. There's no, and what they're going to say is that there's no particular age. Uh, theologians come to the conclusion that the age is somewhere between five and seven, when a child uh, can actually understand the gospel and can accept it or reject it. The age of accountability deals with the age where a person can make a decision about Jesus Christ. When they say that, that's not that that issue doesn't exist in the Bible. These people are crack cocaine. So again, that would take a very long time for me to go over in this. I, I've done it in Google Hangouts with atheists, but this topic has come up. And because um, they wanted to know what happens to a baby when a baby dies. And we talk about the age of accountability. Many Christians, uh, many of us believe that when a baby dies, that baby is going to spend eternity with, eternity with God. And if I had the opportunity to go back and forth with that, he would like, I'm pretty sure he would have came up to the same conclusion as well. But maybe not, because you know they don't believe in the concept of heaven. Let's get back to the actual stream here and continue. But can somebody please tell me what, which Christian doctrine was destroyed on that show? Anybody. Can somebody give me one Christian doctrine that was watching that believes that, that I'm sorry, can somebody give me one Christian doctrine that was destroyed on that show? Just one. You said you chose you chose to come to Christ? Oh, yeah, definitely chose to come to Christ, yes. Okay, okay, so how do you reconcile John 15 and 16? Well, so we're done with Romans 9, 19, then, right? We're totally done with that, right? Yeah, you want so to say that you're wrong, we're, right? we're yeah. going to go to what you call a supporting scripture. Well, you don't know what my supporting scripture because you didn't ask me what my supporting scripture was. No, I said I'm going to what you would call a supporting scripture. Oh, okay, so we're going to go to your scripture where you believe that I would go to. So we're going to go to John, okay, no problem. I'm going to go to your scripture in John, because you never asked me what my scripture is. So let's go to John. I'm assuming this is the gospel of John and not the, uh, not first John, right? John, so John, John 15, 16. All right, so this is the scripture that you would go to in John 15, 16. No problem. Let's go to John 15, 16, a scripture I would, I would not argue. I never said on myself this. Okay, so John chapter 15, verse 16, and it says, uh, ye have not chosen me, I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and to bring forth fruit uh, and that your fruit should remain. <laughs> so however you shall ask of your father in my name, he may give it to you. He's talking to the disciples. What's your point? Okay, so no, <laughs> so you're, are you a disciple of Christ? Yes, I am. But in this you're case, disciple. he's talking about, he's talking about uh, choosing them um, as disciples. Are you a Calvinist? Okay. I'm just curious. Okay. okay. This ain't your turn to ask questions. Let's go to another supporting scripture. I don't get to ask questions. That's okay. John, John 6, John 6 and 44. You can't ask me. You know I'm not a Calvinist, first of all. So let's go to John yes, 6 and 44. Yes, you are. Because this is an argument that they use. I'm not a Calvinist. Wait a minute. I just believe the Bible. John 6 and 44. Let's read it. Wait a minute. You so said, John chapter these, 6, verse 44. You said that that's talking about the disciples. We're going to disprove that. John 6 and 44. This applies to all who come to Christ. Read. Okay, so before I read this uh, regarding uh, John chapter 15, uh, are we clear that you're wrong about this already? Yet? This is your Abs abs absolutely not. So let's support but it. John 15, 16, is it my supported scripture? That's your scripture, not mine. No, no, no. My, that's not your scripture. That's my scripture. So read right. John 6 and 44. Okay, so let's I'm going to go to John 6. Applying, let's see if this is applying to just the disciples. Okay, great. So at some point, we're going to get to what I believe, right, soon, right? You're going to explain it in your answer. Well, we have, you haven't asked me about nothing I believe yet. This is what you believe. No, you said, you, G man, you said you chose. We're, we're dealing with free will. You said you chose God. So we're just disproving that. That's not. But I would I'm never using. use that passage of scripture as my proving. You okay. can't show me on YouTube where I've said that. You said it right now. You just no, said I never that. said that. You said in John 6. I never said a mess like that. It is, it, I'm, this is what we're asking you a question. We're asking you a question. You're answering with this. So read John 6 and 44. Okay, so we're going to go to your scripture in John 6 44 again. Because again, these are not my verses that I would use. 
Okay, go John ahead. John chapter 6, verse 24, and it says, No man can come to me except the Father, which has sent me, uh, withdraw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. What does so that what's your mean? Point? No, 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 what's your point? You, this is the scripture that you wanted me to read. That's not my okay. scripture. Okay. I'm using. That's I, your scripture. I provided the scripture. I want you to exegete the scripture. The floor is yours. I'm, well, I'm refusing to exegete the scripture because this is not the scripture that I would wait, use. Wait, wait. <laughs> yes, you are. Nobody said it was about you are. everybody. Yes, no, you nobody are. Said was, nobody said yes, it was about are. everybody. We need your undivided attention for this question, all right? Um, uh, uh, wait a minute. Am I going to be allowed to answer the question? Yeah, this is retarded. I am not going to answer Hey, we I am not going to answer it. Like, dude, look, come on, man. Let's just, God, I, let you me can answer. answer. You can answer, okay? Don't I'll let me answer. It, no you can have all the time in the world to answer, okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Um, okay. Fired. Does uh, God contradict himself? No, he doesn't contradict himself. And there are no contradictions in the Bible. And just because a person may not be able to answer a particular thing doesn't mean that the Bible has contradictions. Try again. That's a perfect answer. Do you think God is a liar? No, I don't, but I believe the Hebrew words are. Beautiful. Does God love everybody? <laughs> yes, God loves everyone with agape love. So since God lives in eternity, God saw what Esau would do. Okay? And because God saw what Esau would do, God made it, God, God did not like it. That's why he said he, he hated Esau. And he, hated, and he loved Jacob because Jacob turned out to be someone that was going to be faithful to the promise, whereas Esau was going to disrespect it in the sense that he would sell it for a birth, um, that he would sell it for a bowl of soup. Now, if you don't like the answer that I gave you, that's one thing. But in order to show me that I'm wrong, my friend, you got to prove it. Okay, okay. Now, here's the thing, right? Now, how does that work when you say that God loves everybody? If you're saying that God saw what Esau was going to do and hated him because of what he was going to do. How does that work when you believe that he loves everybody? Well, when I said that he loved everybody, I was talking about agape love. That is God unmerited, that, 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 that is God's unconditional love that he had for his creation. It's real quick, too, because he said, he said God got agape, he got agape love. He got agape love for everybody. Watch this. Can you, can you mute this little kid, please? Thank you. You guys got me. Let me answer the question. He said, he said God got agape love me... for everybody, right? Now watch this. If y'all can see this, this is Romans 9 and 13, right? And I'm pulling it up in the Greek, right? Now, notice the word for love. It's agape, which comes from what agape. He loves agape, uh, Jacob, and he hates Esau. So it's showing you that the love and hate, the hate that he has is opposite or juxtaposed to the agape love that he has for Jacob. So this proves that he does not have agape love for all people because he don't agape. He's opposite of agape Esau. This is this is the word for hate, the Greek word for hate same word that uh, you get the word misogyny from which means you hate women right that's what that means so you're out of the park man go ahead Deacon. he was straight up whiter than the whitest white man 